Hello, I'm Grandmaster Nick Purr and welcome to my Killer Endgame DVD. Now, the endgame is the most important part of chess. We all can make mistakes in the endgame and often they cost us. If you see me making any mistakes in the endgame, then you probably got me confused with Richard, but it does happen. The most aggressive players in chess, Topolov, Morozevic, Shirov, they all know their end games inside out. When, when you approach an end game, it's different to when you approach the middle game. With the end game, you need to know the basic principles behind how to play the ending. And when you know the basics, it makes it much easier to play the whole ending because you know what position you're aiming for, you know how to play that position, and you can find the correct moves in order to maneuver into that type of position. Both on the defensive side when you're defending a bad end game and on the aggressive side when you've got the upper hand, it's very important to know the basic principles. This DVD is designed for all levels of player. We start from the very basic end games in the under 1000 category, such as king and queen against king and king and rook against king, and we go all the way through to the most difficult technical endings such as rook and f and h pawn versus rook. Those very difficult technical endings, if you first approached them, you wouldn't have a clue how to defend them. But I'm hoping that as you go through the DVD and you start to understand more and more principles, you'll have a much better idea of how to play the ending and how to actually defend and attack, even in the most difficult end games. This is the first example from the 1400 to 1800 rating category. I'm going to be looking at queen against pawn endgames. When the pawn's too far back, the queen's always going to win in a queen against pawn endgame. However, when the pawn reaches the 7th rank, the situation is very interesting. In some positions, the queen's winning against the pawn, but in other positions, the defender can get a draw using just his pawn on the 7th rank and his king. This is an example of a game I had against Fide Master Jonathan Rogers in the 4 and CL. I'm a pawn up in this rook and pawn endgame, so it's quite difficult for him to defend. However, he found a very accurate and very good defensive technique. He played rook to a1. After rook to a1, I played pawn to g5. Black plays rook takes a3. White plays rook takes a3. Black plays king takes a3, white plays pawn to g6, black plays king to b2, white plays pawn to g7, black plays pawn to a3, white promotes to a queen, and now black plays pawn to a2. With the pawn on a2, black can actually get a draw in this position. In queen against pawn endgames, if the pawn's either on, on the rook's file or the bishop's file and on the seventh rank, then it's a drawn endgame. However, if the pawn's on the knight file or one of two central squares, then it's winning for the queen. Let's have a look at how black can defend this endgame. I played queen to g7 check and black played king to b1. I played queen to g6 check. I'm just trying to move my queen closer to his king side. He played king to b2. Remember, black has to threaten the queen on every move because he doesn't want to give white a spare move to move his king closer to the queening square. If white can use his king and his queen, he could win this endgame. But just with his queen, there's no way for him to make progress. And let's see why. White now plays queen to f6 check. Black plays king to b1. White plays queen to f5 check. Black plays king to b2. White plays queen to b5 check. And now black plays a key move. Black plays king to a1. He doesn't give white a chance to move his king closer to the pawn. For example, if white were to play king to e3 now, it would be stalemate. So white can't play king to e3. Instead, he has to move his queen. So I play queen to c4. 
black played king to b2 and I played queen to b4 check. And yet again, black plays king to a1. So white can't move his king closer as it would be stalemate. I played queen to c5, trying to set up a trick because I knew that I couldn't advance my king any closer without giving stalemate. Black played king to b2, and white plays king to e2. Now black can get a queen. After black queened, I played king to d2, trying to set up some checkmating traps. However, queen against queen in this situation is an easy draw as long as black's careful. Black decided to defend with queen to a2. If black had played king to b3, this would have been losing because I could play queen to b5 check and after king to a3, queen to a5 check, king to b2, queen to b4 check, king to a2 and now white can win with king to c2. Black can't stop all of the checkmating threats that white has. Black also can't give white check. So even in queen against queen, you have to be very careful. However, Jonathan was aware of this, and instead of playing king to b3, he played queen to a2. After queen to a2, I played queen to b4 check, and Jonathan played queen to b3, and we agreed a draw. He could have actually drawn it in a more amusing way with king to a1 check. And after king to c1, black has the only drawing move, queen to c4 check, forcing white to stalemate black. So with the queen against the rook's pawn, it is actually a drawn position. With the queen against the knight's pawn, it's a winning position. Let's have a quick look at queen against knight's pawn. Okay, now I'm going to look at Queen against the Knight's Pawn on the 7th rank. So taking my position against Jonathan Rogers, instead of Black having his Pawn on A2 and his King on B2, Black will now have his Pawn on B2 and his King on C2. So Black has a Knight's Pawn. In this position, White can win because he can force the Black King in front of the Black Pawn. And on that move, that will give him a spare move to move his King one square closer. So in the initial start position, White could play Queen to C4 check. And after black plays king to d2, white can play queen to b3, black plays king to c1, and white can play queen to c3 check. Now in order to defend the b2 pawn, black has to play king to b1. Notice the difference in this situation compared to the example with the pawn on the a file is that black's no longer in stalemate. So white can move his king closer, for example, king to e2. White was una unable to do this with the pawn on a2 and the king on a1, as it would have been stalemate. However, here, black can play king to a2. After king to a2, white could play queen to a5 check and repeat the process again. For example, king to b3, queen to b5 check, king to a2, queen to a4 check, king to b1. And now white can move his king closer again, king to d3. And after king to c1, white could finish the game with queen to c2 checkmate. So the idea with the knight's pawn against the queen is that the queen can always force the king in front of the knight's pawn. And on that move, white can move his king one square closer. Remember, white needs to use his king and his queen in order to win the pawn. Black doesn't have any stalemate traps. So white's winning in a queen against a knight's pawn on the seventh rank. Let's have a look at the example where black has a pawn on the bishop's file. Now I'm going to look at a third example, this time with the pawn on the bishop's file. So looking at my end game against Jonathan Rogers, I'm going to put the pawn from a2 onto c2. This endgame is also drawing, and let's see how black can draw this endgame. So white could start with a move like queen to b8 check. 
Black can't afford to put his king in front of his pawn because if he puts the king in front of the pawn, that gives white a spare move to move his king closer. So black could play, for example, king to a2. Queen to c7, white's bringing his queen closer. King to b2. Black needs to threaten to queen on every move. Queen to b6 check. King to a2. Queen to c5. King to b2. Queen to b4 check. King to a2. Queen to c3. King to b1. And queen to b3 check. Now is a really important part. With the knight's pawn, the king had to move in front of the pawn. However, with a bishop's pawn, black's got a very clever move. He can play king to a1, and black is threatening to queen again. White doesn't have time to take the pawn, because if he takes the pawn, it's stalemate. White also can't move his king closer, because then black could promote to a queen. So in this position, there's no way for white to make progress, because he has to stop black from queening, and he can't take the pawn. Remember in queen against pawn endgames, the attacker needs to force the defender's king in front of the pawn in order to gain a move to move his own king closer to the pawn. Therefore, if you ever have a queen against a pawn on the 7th rank position, if the pawn is on the rook's file or the bishop's file, it's a draw. However, if the pawn's on the knight's file or one of the two central files, then the queen's winning. And this piece of information is very important. Jonathan Rogers knew this information in my endgame against him and he used it in order to make a draw because he could force the position to a queen against pawn endgame. If his pawn hadn't been on the rook's file and had been on the knight's file, he wouldn't have been able to use this defence and he would have had to find a different way to try and defend the endgame. So knowing this piece of information actually made the endgame much easier for him to defend. If he didn't know this information, then he would have had a hard time trying to stop my past g-pawn. And that's how you know whether to play queen against pawn endgames or whether to avoid the queen against pawn endgames because if the pawn's on the rook's file or the bishop's file, it's a draw. If the pawn's on the knight's file or a central file, then it's winning for the queen. Mm -hmm.